You guys remember this movie? Now, growing up, this movie is probably one that really formed a lot of opinions I might have on the threats of technology. You know, very young seeing this movie, having it, a copy of it, watching it, probably more than any other movie in my life. Um, so today I want to talk a little bit about the danger here and some of the progression that we're seeing. Some people believe that we need to consider giving artificial intelligence and robots human rights. Not only human rights, but they also want to give robots voting rights. And they talk about this. And I also want to talk about some of the latest in um, some of the work that's being done on these robots that really makes it seem a little closer. And I don't believe we should be giving robots or artificial intelligence programs human rights. I mean, that is a billionaire's dream. Create a thousand robots and you can vote a thousand times. Create as many robots as you like and you can continue voting, meaning that humans will just become less of less value over time. But you are a Terminator, right? Yes. Cyberdyne Systems Model 101. No. And what defines, what defines you know, the warning of the Terminator. What was this this model of the Terminator? What was it exactly? And then we're going to go and relate it to the present day. I'm outside. I'm a cybernetic organism, living tissue over a metal endoskeleton. You heard him. Living tissue, as we see in this latest news story, they're already putting human living tissue and working on having this work in robotics. So uh, you see this creepy looking face here, just smiling. That's actual human tissue. So if you really had a goal of giving artificial intelligence robots human rights, this would be a big step in that direction. I mean, think about it. One of the justifications against giving robots human rights is the fact they're just robots. They're just programs. They're just you know, hunks of metal and other materials that create a simulated living thing. It's not a real living thing. This is something that is powered by a battery. This is something you can unplug. This is something that is programmed to simulate emotions. But as they mention in some of these articles, um, the fact that they simulate emotion, they seem to justify it as being equal in some way to emotion but that is not true these are just machines just like a car it's a tool and it should never have uh, human rights if you ask me that's the biggest threat one of the biggest threats that we have today is them trying to give these once you give them rights you know what's gonna happen this means the people who want the most power in the world are gonna mass produce them because they're gonna have rights you're gonna basically be able to multiply your population and give them the same rights with a superior ability to accomplish tasks. So basically, humans will become absolutely meaningless. And that's one thing I like about the world of art, is it is the one uh, human thing that is left out there in a way. It is the representation of what it means to be human. So even though we have artificial intelligence creating all of this artwork, um, you know, it's never going to be the same as the original thought process and design process of the original human being. It takes a combination of work from various artists, and it combines that into something it can render uh, to meet your description. But is it really art? Is it really human art? There's just something off about it. And when you see a sculpture in person done by hand, things like that, compare that to something you've seen on AliExpress or one of those other mass production places, um, you're going to see something more original when it's done by hand. And that is one thing I believe in, is the world of art and how it relates to culture, how um, that is what human is. That represents, you know, the greatest of humanity. And 
when we consider that people want to actually and these people are dead serious about giving human rights you know even you know with Lex Friedman one of the podcasts uh, this guy he says it's only a matter of time at some point uh, they'll be as deserving of freedom as human beings are yeah I as deserving of freedom as human beings are. That just shows the delusion that the scientists who are working on this, I mean, they must be, I, I don't want to make assumptions, but, you know, what exactly drives them to push for human rights? They want, you know, you see all these relationship robots. You see that, I'm sure you've seen that in Japan. They have actual robots that people have made their girlfriend. Um, maybe that is the way they're feeling about it. But I am looking at it from the lens and the perspective of billionaire class who would love more power. You know, if you can get human rights for the robots, and what better way would be to relate it to being human, the closer you can make it to human, similar to the Terminator here with living tissue, living tissue over an endo metal skeleton exactly what is being created so i see this as a huge huge development in that we are seeing that they are working with human tissue live human tissue keyword it is live human tissue and what does that create that turns the robot into basically an android in a way in a way basically the Terminator. That's what it turns it into. It's it's the development towards the Terminator. And I would just imagine if the Terminator had full voting rights, had all the rights that we enjoy. Imagine an army of those around the world. It would be unstoppable. There would be no say humans would become the slaves. And as I mentioned with artificial intelligence, today you may believe you are programming it, but the more you use artificial intelligence to accomplish day-to-day -day tasks, the more it starts to program you. And that's just something I wanted to talk about today. I'm going to have some other stuff coming out real soon. Um, and if you're interested in the I2P Plus, I2P um, desktop, I mean, you can use I2P Plus, but you can also use the Java I2P regular, and you can also use I2P D. It comes with a shortcut for that. So uh, that is something I fixed recently. So if you're interested in that, take a look. And this is an example of it running in Mulvad. I think I'm going to switch it back over to LibreWolf. And I think what I'm going to do next is I'm going to add an option to allow you to enter your browser command, and it'll automatically set it up for whatever browser you have. Because people do like to use various choices. Um, and, you know, I want to make it as easy as possible for people to try I2P. So that's the reason I started that project. Just something uh, that I thought would be neat. So an automated shortcut similar to Tor Browser. And I guess at this point, so do check that out over at uh, the Gidea Onion. You can download it, automatically install it, and the latest blog post also covers how. So I fixed a little issue on that just the other day. It also now has something else. Once you start it up, it has a new, uh, just a little pop-up message. So it lets you know that you should wait about seven minutes to actually start using it. Uh, so at this point, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave you with this creepy face and let you dwell on the fact that we are on our way to the Terminator. So at this point, I'm going to leave you with this creepy face smiling at you with living a cybernetic organism, living tissue over metal endoskeleton. Uh, that is where we're headed today, it seems to be the case. And I guess we'll just have to figure it out as we go. But I definitely wanted to report on this because I think this is a creepy development, that they're actually using human tissue over potentially future artificial intelligence robots. I think that brings them much closer to getting this creepy smiley thing to have equal rights to you, the right to own weapons, the right to self-defense as it may be called, but a superior ability to do all these things, the ability to basically replace you. And as many as you can manufacture, 
is as many people as you can replace. So it is a big issue to me, and the fact that they're using living human tissue to me blows me away, but also it just reminds me that they've been calling for human rights for artificial intelligence. I never thought it could be possible until I saw this creepy thing with human skin because it is a partly living organism, a partly human living organism. That's the key. So, of course, it's bringing us closer to artificial intelligence, the threat of artificial intelligence having equal rights to us. Big, big problem with that, and I see it only being negative for humanity. So that's what I got today, guys. Just wanted to share that story with you and some of my concerns about robots gaining human rights. Of course, the World Economic Forum, one of our favorites, has been talking about this since at least 2015. Uh, it is just something, you know, investors, they would love this because this will give them immense power. And that's what I got today, guys. Make sure to like, share, and subscribe, and I'll be back later with more on how to protect your security and privacy.